Signalis is a beautifully written game with complex writing and deep story. The lore of the game is something that can take hours to even get the basics understood. However, even at a cursory glance, the game's central importance of love is evident. So over the course of this video I will be exploring the role of love in Signalis, and how the different kinds of love define the connections between characters we observe. So with no more delay, let's get right into this. Into this. To begin, we should cover the most surface level, but also the most important kind of love in Signalis, that being love of the romantic kind. Ulster's romantic love for Arion is impossible to miss. Her desire to push forward through the disrupted, distorted state of S23, her memories of Arion that fill her mind in a moment of desperation, and her unwavering commitment by trying to fulfill the lost promise clearly demonstrates her love for her lover. Where Ulster uses actions to showcase this love, Arion finishes this painting with a commitment of words. There is no quote more reflective of this than that of the key of love. I've tried to teach Elster how to dance. So cute how clumsy she can be when it comes to these things. Before I met Elster, I never believed I would find someone I could fall in love with like that. This romantic quote articulates the depth of her feelings for her partner, and I think it's truly a great reflection of the beauty of the love between the two of them. While the romantic is the centerpiece, there are other kinds of love in Signalis, first of which being fraternal or sibling love. It is this fraternal love that drives Issa to push to find her sister, and it is this kind of love that reinforces her parallels with Elster, for as Elster searches for her romantic love, Issa is willing to brave the depths just like her for her own fraternal love that she holds for her sister. Issa arguably goes through as much hardship, if not more, than Elster, braving Lang, being corrupted, and ultimately succumbing to the infection, all in the name of this love. The greatest articulation of the importance of this fraternal love to Issa is her finale, for upon learning that the person she loved was gone, she succumbed to the corruption no longer able to keep it at bay as she lacked the love that let her move forward. The next kind of love is a little different than the prior two, but also holds a key importance, and this is occupational love. The love Adler holds for Falk is complicated, and an entire video could be made on its own regarding this topic. But there is no question that the form this love takes is greatly different than the love demonstrated by the prior two. For Adler loves Falk less as a person, and more so loves her as a role, talking about her as his commander, his great leader who is able to do anything, and who has been tainted. In his diaries, he details a love that seems less so authentic, and more so a byproduct of his adoration for the facility and his status within it. His occupational love, however, is still powerful, motivating Adler to murder Elster countless times and driving him to enforce the cycle long after he has realized the futility of it all. Adler is often compared to as a foil to Elster, and in that regard I fully agree. For while Elster loves the person that is Arion with romantic love, Adler at best loves the concept that is Falk with occupational love. While Arion talks in her diaries of loving Elster, Adler doesn't appear a single time in Falk's. Adler, at the end of the day, is simply a worker below Falk, a worshipper of a god that barely cares that he exists. And it is this one-sided relationship that Adler can perfectly reflect the opposite of Elster, and be the great antagonist that he is. From the occupational love, we can turn to a similar, less central love, this being the love of comrades, demonstrated by Elena Sio and the Gestalt. Let me explain this one to a greater degree first. On the battlefield, when it is just you and your fellow soldiers against certain death, the bonds that grow are deeper than many others. This kind of love is similar to occupational, but deeper. It is a sense of camaraderie and mutual care that does also deserve to be recognized as love. It is this kind of love we likely see in the photo with Siu and their gestalt. While we can't be for certain that they weren't romantically connected, it can be assumed that part of their mutual care for each other was born out of the necessity and commonality in experiences on the battlefield. I bring this up in part to address an idea I've heard before, that the love between Elster and Arianne is not pure, Rather, just both sides are admiring the past, Arion wanting to mimic Elena by embracing this love, and Elster simply confused from Gestalt memories. However, if this past love was simply soldiers bonding over the battlefield, it grants a higher level of separation and specialness to the love of the main duo. And I'd like to say that I doubt Arion would say what she said about Elster if it was to simply mimic the past. 
Now we can go a bit deeper, to a kind of love that is even more complicated than all the prior, and distant from the romance we all openly embrace as the common definition of love, and this one being self-love. Love of oneself is certainly a kind of love. Granted, it has no separate target and is often a battle must be fought within oneself to either gain control of the love or to gain it at all. It is this concept of fighting oneself that we see between Elster and Falk. We watch as Falk is confused as to what she truly is, desiring memories that are not hers and wanting a future she cannot have, while also embracing the ideals that she is the god that the facility has stated that she is. Her battle between her emotional weakness and her overwhelming external strength is a battle for her to gain self-understanding. It is a battle for her to love herself. And I don't use the word battle lightly here, as it is truly what we see when Folk and Elster exchange their final blows. Folk's external is broken. She no longer has to hide behind the shell of what Aeon and the world told her that she must be, for she has been physically defeated. She is no god, just a scared and confused replica, who inside is deeply lost. By shattering this external, we expose the weak internal folk, folk who wants to be those memories. And so we let her. She opens her mind to Elster and lets her carry on the torch, where she says it, we have become whole. And while folk may die in this moment, this is a moment of acceptance of self. She finally accepts that inside she is now all Elster, and rather than hate Elster, and by extension, herself, she instead chooses to entrust herself with the future. And by trusting herself and accepting who she now has become, Falk dies acceptingly, having gained a love for who she was in her final moments. To close out this video, I'd like to end where we started, with Elster and Ariane, to bring up one last kind of love demonstrated in the game, this being forbidden love. As it is stated by the sealed document in memory, Elster and Ariane were never supposed to develop feelings for each other. They weren't supposed to be together. This forbidden nature can be seen in the endings as well. For there is no happy ending for our pair. Either Elster dies before her lover, Ariane dies from her lover, or both enter a twisted chance with very ominous messaging. They were never meant to love each other, but in the end they did. While the love they had didn't end well and tragedy ultimately struck them and everything they love, the beauty of the love while it happens, that is what truly paints the beauty of the game in my opinion. But that's all I've got. This video is something I've wanted to do for a while, and I'm happy to say I finally had time to cobble it together. If you'd like to join a Discord to talk about the game, my home Discord, VSL, is linked below, as always. It's a cool place, and we'd love to have you. Also, massive thank you to Sophia for editing this video for me. She's an amazing person, a great friend of mine, and was a huge help in making this project possible. As I said, I've just not had the time to edit videos as much lately, so having a friend to help me out was definitely helpful. But yeah, that's all I've got for today. This has been Christopher Beast, and I hope to see you all well next time.